Beginning the summer. meeting is officially beginning next summer. And the first item on our agenda after roll call is approving last month's minutes. So hopefully folks had a chance to see what was attached to the email. Are there any um, suggested changes or corrections, omissions? We have a motion to approve. A second. Motion to approve. Are there any public members of the public who would like to be heard at this time? Seeing none, moving on. New business. What did you say about the icebreaker? Did you say that you would be doing something? Um. Yes, I can. Okay. I also I was thinking one that I might have said yes to it. Okay. I mean, I don't shoot, I don't have one. So okay. okay. I, I don't have one. I can come up with one. Do you have one? You have one. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you can reject mine. Um, but a fun one we did recently was uh, if you could be a spice or a seasoning, what one? We didn't. We haven't done that one in this group yet. I mean, right? that does not sound familiar. I can't okay. I forget. Okay, a spice <laughs> or a seasoning. Now, in the group that I did this last, it was interpreted very loosely. So, you know, condiment, something that you would add to your old food. to seasoning. Yes, it doesn't have to be um, heat specifically. Mm. Like, oh yes, so please, Tracy Tepper wants to go first. That's awesome. Um, yes. My my dad used to put lemon pepper seasoning like blood, <gasps> on mm -hmm. everything. So I like can't eat meat with that. <laughs> it's like my favorite seasoning ever because he always seasoned things with that. So lemon pepper. Very cool. Anyone else? Okay. I'm going to say rosemary because I just planted two and was watering them this morning and hoping they grow. Because uh, I forgot how much I like including fresh mm -hmm. herbs in it when I cut. When it, when it grows, give me some and I'll make you some of my rosemary olive oil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Take care on that. It's a pot. It's, from what I know, it's very good. <laughs> the critics have said. You <laughs> no, it's one of my favorite breads to make. Actually. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I there's a soft spot in my heart for ginger. Mm. Um, good old Pennsylvania ginger snap, mm. which is like as spicy as Pennsylvania Dutch food gets. And yet, I can't tell you how often I will eat like a ginger snap or a ginger cookie and be like, that's not spicy enough. That's not how, that's not how they would make it. Like, and yet, like, you can't give any other, which is just really funny to me. And it just, yes. So it's very homey, and I still love it, even though now I eat way spicier foods than ginger. And I'm you really careful. So all of my favorite recipes, she hates. She had to move to, like, my husband's side of the family that has like very mellow versions of gingerbread cookies where I'm like, oh, it's not a gingerbread cookie, and then my daughter really does. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it has become a complicated spice. <laughs> I can go next. Um, I don't know if anybody, if there's anyone left. There's <laughs> two left. John and me. Okay. Oh, okay, there you go. Um, I'm going to go with oregano. Um, I do a lot of cooking, Mexican food, and oregano is kind of our our base, our go-to, as far as spices goes. So, and plus I love growing it. I have different spots in the garden where I have, you know, oregano growing and different variations of oregano. So I, yeah. Thanks. Susie, do you prefer one variation of oregano over the others? Or they have different um, applications. There's like, you know, it, it depends on what you're cooking. So there's like the Greek oregano, 
that I might put in more med in Mediterranean dishes or, um, you know, and then, you know, the Italian oregano that would go like pastas and sauces like that. And then for my salsas, you know, I use the Mexican oregano. It's a hot, hot and spicy kind of, so it has like a little tang to it. So it really depends on what I'm cooking. My favorite seasoning is garlic, but that's not interesting. So, but it, it's good. Do the question is, if you eat spice, it you, if do you, you, eat spice right what you you would be right? Oh, no, what would I be? Is. What is? Do you I ever eat garlic just, straight? Just hot clove. If it's roasted. Okay. Oh, I do want to cook with it. Do you? Oh. Yeah, my my husband does it's too. It's supposed to be really good for my husband. Just, yeah, just, I don't do a lot of raw. Gross. I <laughs> think, but. It, what what would I be? That was the um, question. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was really hard though. Yeah. How do you not pick your favorite though? Right. Yeah. I know. I was just thinking about it like this. So I could either stick with garlic because it just makes everything better, and you can't have too much in my opinion. So maybe maybe that's how some people feel about. Me. Um, or I could be cilantro, which I also so, adore, and, and cilantro is, you love it or you hate it, and there are other people safer. I've met who say that. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm being one of them, clearly. Um, so yes, my second favorite is cilantro. My wife would said a little of that, it was a long one. Cilantro. For, but it's the... Yeah, if you love it. She's like, alright. If it gets just to that moment where it's too much. Yeah. One of my children like cannot see it. I don't know. Well, I I'll cheat and like, give more than one because I I was gonna go down the sort of nostalgia route you know, with Tracy did, which is funny because it's also lemon pepper. Mm -hmm. oh. um, because my wife loved lemon pepper mm -hmm. and her and my stepdaughter. And on everything, <laughs> like it didn't matter. We whatever if we were eating chicken or tacos, lemon pepper. So I don't, I can't say I use it that much, but I would like to be it because of her sensitivity. But uh, for me personally, it'd be cayenne pepper. Yep, yeah, because it's spicy. And I tend to get spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that question. You didn't that think this was going to be a revealing so personal question. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for playing along. I do intend to keep this as part of our standing agenda so long as we have time for it. Um, I just think it spices things up. <laughs> well no, I know. Um, <laughs> It just helps us like connect and, and get to know each other a little bit more each month, which I think is helpful. We ever need to have more serious or contentious dialogue, you know, being able to see each other as whole human beings is like. Okay. Any questions or anybody want to volunteer for next okay. meeting? Is that a yes, Kate? I'm here next to you. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's in July. Mm -hmm. The 15th. Is the yeah. Thank you. Um, all I have on the agenda is the take home kit from the library. So mm -hmm. I'm not like under there. So yes, I'm available. Okay, we can do this month. That is all we have for new business, so we will revisit old business. Shelving updates and children and teen services. So that's uh, for me to talk about. I thought what we might do, because between the last board meeting and this, that project pretty much got completed. Mm -hmm. And you may have been in there or not. Oh, I, I thought it would be good to go in and I could kind of describe some of that. We could either break the meeting now and do it, or wait till official business is over and then go do it. Sorry, Susie, I'll give you a private tour. Okay. 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 Okay.
Uh, either way, I, I don't know if it helps with the meeting flow. You can just do it after, I think. That seems to make sense. Spots to wait yeah. until the end. Yeah, since yeah. we have a, a Susie on Zoom. Do we need to do a motion vote thing? No, but I, for the purposes of the meeting, since you know anyone viewing might not want to, might not get to see it or hear a description as you all will when we walk through. So we had some public improvement funds to use. We generally get that every year um, on some level, and so the shelving, the physical metal shelving in, in the children and teen area, uh, is very very old. Some of it in bad shape. Some of it literally unsafe. So <clears throat> that project replaced all of it, except for this specific team area. That'll have to be a different project. But um, so all of that's replaced. It, it gave us the opportunity to do a little, slightly little different of a layout. Um, not much, but you'll see when you see it um, with the efforts of the children's staff and really doing some refining of the collection and some good weeding of old books or damaged books. Generally, stuff we always do anyway but um, removed a lot from the collections we consolidate. And then in the um, north side of it, which is, as you walk in, it's the back part of it, where the windows are that face um, 4th Street. That's all very open now. Um, and so we can have some of our children's programs in children's, which was the idea. We won't be able to do all of that. Some of the programs are still too big, so they will be in the meeting rooms. But um, so you get to see that uh, when we go in there. But that's that's essentially what we did, and it's done. There's a few punch lumps items that won't even you won't even know about, but you know some loose screws that they have to come. You know, it's really small, so it's a good project. And we'll look at that later. Thank you, John. Yep. And those public improvement funds, they come from the city? Or they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was something started before I got here. Um, and it, it has a timeline, although I don't know when that ends. But I've planned out through 2028 or 9. So it goes on for a while. Um, and, and what we do with that is we at least give an idea of what we think we want to do. It has to be publicly beneficial. You can't use it to like renovate John's office. Um, too bad. But, um, <laughs> so that's the only really rule about it. Um, there's, I don't know how it really gets figured out, but you know, for recreation and culture, as you break it down between museum, recreation, and library, there's a certain amount I have to work with every year and even though I'm planning, like, what do you want to do in 2028? It's like, well, I think I'll do these things. But the reality is when that year hits, I can change it all up as long as the amount doesn't change, which is nice because if a priority changes, you know, I, I can shift that. Does the amount change significantly from year to year, or does it tend to be in the same general? Kind of in the same area. I mean, last, we there was a year, a, a few years ago, um, that fund was used actually to help construct the computer lab that's upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but there was some money encumbered for that when they budgeted for it that didn't get used, which is fine. Uh, we discovered that now, and so that was able to carry over and actually help with this project, which was uh, a little bit more than you know what we had available to use this year, so that'll help cover that monthly. And it's outside of the operational budget. Correct. Very cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah. John, are you, do you are you at the point in your painting where you can share what you're thinking for next year? Yeah, I have it. it I just I'm trying to remember what what it yeah. is. Um, there was something for this year which I won't be able to do because of the. Shelving project go being pretty costly, which is fine. It was much, very much needed. And I think this year there were a couple of things. It might have been some more furniture items upstairs, so that might get tabled till next year. Um, I know there's that's one of them. Is like up, particularly upstairs, a lot of like just the seating areas, like especially some of the more lounge 
mm-hmm. chairs are way over. We've already had to even um, get rid of some just mm-hmm. because they're in such bad shape because mm-hmm. they've been there so long. Yeah, so um, it's things like that. Um, I put I know I put in there for one of the future years to add a study room or two because those are packed full from open and close every day. Well, you know, if you remember upstairs, you, you kind of have like the alcoves and then the study room and then the alcove. They all used to be alcoves, oh, so the whole so wall would just be study room. The alcoves are nice mm-hmm. and people use it. It's a, I mean, if I were a library visitor, that's where I would go sit because you have the windows and there's plants and at night there's a little lamp, you know. But we'll change them into study room. Mm-hmm. But that 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 one I remember is that's at least three or four years out. Again, I could change that and mm-hmm. do it in twenty twenty five if I want. But uh, it depends on the cost of that and what I can spend that year. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. With old business, are we also discussing if the candidate that is moving forward to city council? Forward? It'll be in the next agenda item. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's kind of, you're right. You're not incorrect that it would kind of be old business, but it's okay. in the director's report. Okay, perfect. Are there any other questions or topics on people's minds? We'll just keep going. Um, our reports and information items, library director. I want to get Costume. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> So I'll start with that, and actually I'll defer a little bit to Tracy because she just communicated with the city clerk today about our candidate and, the, and where they are at in the process. Yeah, so I heard back from the city clerk, the uh, office rather, um, and they held their interviews this last Saturday, the 15th, June 15th, um, and so the their next regular session, which is this upcoming Tuesday, the 25th, um, they will then make the appointments for all boards and commissions, um, so we should know back probably next Wednesday uh, whether that the candidate. But she has chosen to continue. She's yeah. still okay. Yeah, she, yeah. And they said they they've notified all the intents of that process. Well, so, right. yeah. so she's on the schedule. Okay. Susie. Yeah. Um, next Tuesday or tomorrow, we have um, Longmont Housing Authority. So we won't be um, meeting, and it won't be until the 25th. So, um, yeah, I don't know, when you said next Tuesday, I was like, wait, tomorrow or the following Tuesday? Sorry, um, yes, next week, not not. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so you won't hear about it this week, but next next Wednesday. And yeah, we did hear, we did have conduct interviews on Saturday. So okay. we ahead. Thank you for that addition. And so if everything goes smoothly, we have one spot, one vacancy, then that we have an opportunity to fill in the fall? Yeah, the next time they do this, which is, yeah, fall, winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So this person will hopefully will be in the July meeting. That will be the plan. Yeah. Um, and then other things in the director's report. So I wanted to... Uh, just talk a little bit about Pride Month. Uh, some of you was everyone here last year? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so we you know we had a, a lot of activity from some people you know commenting on some of our Pride activities. So far, uh, nothing this year except for one person that asked me about the bulletin board display that we have upstairs. Actually, if 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 you go upstairs, I know if you have kids, you probably would be letting here and go out, but upstairs. Uh, there's a bulletin board we have right by the adult reference desk. It changes monthly, and a patron was asking um, in May, she was asking, what's that going to be in June? So a staff member said, well, we'll do a pride display. So that patron contacted me, and we had a little bit of a conversation, and her comment was, you do that every year, can't you do something else for once? Um, and so I spoke with her, and. I said, well, I mean, that's true. We do do it every year. We also do Black History Month every year, you know, a number of other items that are important to us. And and I would encourage you 
her to read our display program policy, which specifically states that we do displays and programs to represent marginalized communities, of which this is one. So um, I explained that, and the display that's up there now in June is, yes, Pride. I had no intention of changing that. Um, she did give me some ideas of other things that might appeal to Longmont. I don't think she's wrong, but I gave that to some staff to consider for other for bullet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that's gone on so far. Um, we had a, a booth at Longmont Pride last weekend. I saw both of you there. It was nice to see. Um, we had a great uh, time there. Staff had a uh, our staff had a great time. A lot of visitation and engagement with library staff. And um, I saw Susie too there. And so oh, I, Susie spoke. Oh yeah, I didn't catch that part. Um, but it, you know, it was really nice. Um, I just thought it was a good event for, for the library perspective. Just uh, I, I felt good about that. I did last year too, but you know, it was it was a good event. We have things coming up this week, right? So this Saturday is our famous Rainbow Story Time. So I would encourage you to come, um, bring others. It's it's a popular event, um, and so we'll be doing that. And then there's a teen program this week before Saturday. Uh, doing some uh, Pride Month themed crafts and things like that. So, you know, hitting that right now, and so that it's all good stuff. Um, that's what I found. Pride. I wanted to update you for an update, you know, such as it is for the uh, Saint Brain Valley School District and uh, student ID slash library card project. So I went to uh, the last. It was, I don't know how often this is done, Susie, but it was a joint city council and SVVSD board meeting a couple weeks ago. And it was on the agenda, I think thanks to Susie, although it, we never got to it on the agenda um, because time ran out. However, I did get to talk with one of the administrators who was really behind this and very much wants to see this project happen. So I was able to talk to him um, a little bit after the meeting, he got his business card, and I have since emailed him um, to talk about that. And I just gave him a quick, you know, history of my involvement in a project like this, and you know what I think it could be, and it, you know, it really could work. And I'd love to share that with you. So um, he gave me fair warning. You know, it's it's summer; it'll be in and out. So you know, um, I only emailed him a week ago or so. So um, we'll see it, but. It, it's encouraging to re-engage that conversation with somebody that I feel like can make decisions. <laughs> right. Uh, nothing against anyone I spoke with, but I think, you know, there's there's certainly some considerations the school district has to consider with something like this. I feel like what I can bring would help reduce, if not even eliminate, some of those concerns, which really have to do with access and then parental permission. Um, so. It's it kind of at one point I thought it was dead with the people I was speaking to. Now, when speaking with him, I feel encouraged to get that we can actually do this to find the right champion. It's really exactly. Important. So thank you, Susie, too, because you know that with Susie's efforts, I think you know it was getting to the district and on the agenda and to this person who. That's basically what he said is, I'm the person that you need to talk to. Oh, so nice. like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Um, it, so yeah, I, I was very encouraged about that. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention, this is a little ways out, but I, I think this is cool. I just, uh, as we get into, well, before you know it, it'll be here. But the end of September uh, is uh, always the last week of September is Band Books Week. So we always do a lot of activities here, but this year we're doing a pretty big program. Um, we will be um, screening a, an Academy Award nominated a documentary short. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. It's called the ABCs of Book Band. Mm -hmm. If you're a Paramount Plus subscriber, you can watch it. Outside of that, uh, I don't know. I, I got to see it because it was screened before the Oscars happened. 
that was something that we had filmed that was short, all the documentary short nominations. Fabulous film. It's basically interviewing all these kids in Florida uh, and, and their take on, like, why would you take this book out of my hands? Like, I don't get why this is a problem. So it's, it's really good. And it's, all, it's hard to watch, too. It's 20 minutes. But we got the rights to screen it, thanks again to our friends. So this is all supported by the friends. Um, we'll screen the film, and then a group we've worked with every year that does basically like performance readings of like the top five or ten band books of the last year. I can't remember the name of the group. Out, is it Out? That's cool. Do you remember, Tracy? It's like Out, Outlanders or uh, anyway. It'll be on our calendar, and this won't be till very good September. It'll, it's, it'll be. Um, at the museum, so it'll be one of these library at the museum events, which is I love because it's a great venue. Uh, uh, Susie, it's called the ABCs of book banning. Um, and then, so they'll so we'll screen it. They'll do their readings, and then there'll be a little bit of a panel to talk about book banning censorship. Uh, which we're hoping will consist of uh, a librarian that you may have heard, heard of. Her name is uh, Brookie Parks because she worked at High Plains Library District. We've probably talked about this here and was fired, wrongly fired, at least according to now the case. Well, there was a settlement because she did not want to stop doing an LGBTQ plus program that the district wanted her to stop because they were getting too much uh, public pressure to cancel it, and she refused. Uh, she now works at University of Denver, but we've asked her to be on the panel, and I don't know if that's confirmed. Um, yours truly might be sitting there. I keep trying to get out of that. Um, and then uh, we're hoping to get one or two youth, uh, either some of our teams here, particularly <laughs> since the film centers around youth, you know, that we that's want to kind of keep it that way and, and have some of that, so I'm really looking forward to it. I, it's just something I wanted to put on your radar. Um, I'm sure I'll bring it up again, but yeah. And just a, along the lines of book banning, uh, this past Saturday, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the group, Susie might know, but it, 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 it was a, a flag raising for Juneteenth that happened here on Saturday on this plaza. And one of our staff is a member of that group and helped raise the flag. That same staff member who was new here. Oh, that's um, a good idea. Reach out from to the Oh, center. thank you. Yeah. I'll write that down. Um, uh, the, oh, so in our lobby, you know, where we do staff picks and stuff, currently there is a Juneteenth band books display curated by this person and a number of other staff. So all books that have been banned over the course of time from uh, from people of color. So it, it's a very, very good display. Um, and it's gotten a little bit of news there, so. Uh, and, and quickly, swinging back to Pride, we were reached out by Nine News to do a story on some of our Pride programming, so I did respond and haven't heard back. I said, I mean, I responded with some questions. <laughs> There wasn't a lot of information. Like, well, when do you want to do this? Are you coming here? Here's, we have programs this week. Um, right. You know, so I, I just, we'll see if I hear that. Um, so those items are what I have for my director of work pending any questions. This is, this is a comment, not a question, but I just wanted to share uh, ALA, so the Office of International Freedom from ALA, the group that does band book speaks. They, uh, Sure, John's seen this, but their report for 2023 is that pressure groups focused on public libraries in addition to targeting school libraries. The number of title, titles targeted at public libraries increased 92% over the previous year, accounting for 46% of all book challenges in 2023. And I know that hasn't been a huge issue here, fingers crossed, but um, it, it seems very timely to, to really focus on it this year. So 96%? 92%. 96%. I will share this. I'll email you this link right now. Uh, it's just the, 
it, you can Google this. If, if you just Google like ALA Fan Books yes. 2023, you'll get the top 10, but there will also be information about the, the trends. I think we're so lucky um, to live in this community and yeah. not have uh, experienced as many uh, intense challenges uh, as some other communities. However, it's good to stay vigilant and aware because, um, well, frankly, I've seen a lot of hate on Facebook lately toward this library in regard to, to um, Pride Month. And, and I mean, it's, it's just very unkind, not backed by evidence, people emoting and saying whatever they want to say. Um, and it's, it's, my, it's my fault that I read those things and I think other people get to a place where they're better able to ignore them um, or not be, or not have a, a reaction to them, but they still bother me. And when I see things being said about this city and this city's library and excellent programming, it just, well, it just frosts my pumpkin. So um, those people are, they live amongst us who, who do not want us to freely offer resources and books of every perspective and persuasion. It's, it's hard to read, um, but it's still, uh, you know, it's, it's the minority of people that, mm -hmm. that are vocal along. So, sure. you know, it, it sometimes can feel like that's the, the pulse of it. It's, it's no, the pulse. no. And they want a reaction. They want a reaction. We, have, we did have somebody post, I think, on our Facebook page, I think today, with something of that nature about yeah. pride and you know, what we're doing to children. We just, mm -hmm. we ignore it. I, there's no, there's no point in engaging yeah. no. with that. Um, they want that, first of all. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's very disappointing, but. I hate that I can still be surprised, though. Oh, I know. What? People want to shut down our library immediately? Stop. Yeah, I've also been reading this, and I really hope that people writing comments aren't like become library users. That's the goal in some ways. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, see all the things that I create. Did I did I talk last month about the state legislation that got signed by the governor? Mm -hmm. That already had happened. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like oh, I did talk about it because there's. It's a little tricky with us as a municipality yeah. because they, they specifically refer to boards of trustees, yeah. which is not this board technically. Uh, so according to our city attorneys, uh, it wouldn't necessarily apply to us, but I don't think that leaves us you know, mm -hmm. unprotected in a way. But it, it's okay. We, we wrote our policies anyway that is aligned with the legislation, mm -hmm. and I think we have good measures in place, and it's all there to help protect it against some type of ambush of that nature, and that can't happen. Right. So. Thank you for your report, John. Yep. Next on the agenda is a report from the Friends of the Library Liaison. I was not at the meeting last month. Um, so to you, John. I could say a couple <laughs> things about what I know is happening. Like right now, they are um, actively promoting a pop-up sale. So after we got everybody used to the idea, of no more sales until September, have a great summer. Um, we're gonna have a little pop-up situation, uh, fun and games, right? So a lot of board games. Um, oh, wow. The friends have received a lot of donations of uh, like new or in great condition board games other types of games. I think there might be some like role-playing games, some video games, um, some uh, interesting or unique offerings from the uh, like the boutique sort of area. So some vintage or just higher value 
Who are the next books? Uh, June twenty third. That's next week. For your F Y F. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. This is this is one thirty to four. Uh, let me. I am just going to make sure it's not July. It's June. It's June twenty third. So look at that. Uh, it is next Sunday. Huh? One thirty to four. Indeed. And I assume it'll be in this vestibule. In this room. Oh, okay. I mean, this is the first time we've broken that one. Okay. Which is fine. So you might need some signage. I think it's the first time we've broken yeah. And I love I, it's, it. fine. it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I just. That's a pretty cool idea, actually. It is. Just yeah. to have a dedicated for games. Yeah. Um, other thing, I mean, so, I mean, Tracy and I were at that meeting. I think the couple things I remember are. Uh, there's no friends of the library board meeting in June mm -hmm. because there's too many people gone out of town. The, the one in July will be their annual retreat, mm -hmm. which is so it's a meeting and a retreat, um, which, you know, it's like they're a day, they, they just spend more time on planning. It's in July. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, we didn't have any proposals at that meeting, although they've come in after. <laughs> Including the, the, the bandwidth. And uh, they approved via email, I think you're on this too. Uh, we're going to add signage on the other side of the bookstore that goes around the corner so that it's a little more clear that that's also Friends materials um, for the bookshop. Sure, yeah. So I got the, yeah. uh, the proof back from the sign company today, actually, but I'm going to have my graphics person look at it and make sure she doesn't have any suggestions. Otherwise, it replicates what's there, just on the other side. Awesome. Um, and that was something that, that came up there. So. Do you remember anything else from that? That was kind of the big thing, is planning and retreat and not meeting. What I remember from previous conversations is that um, they have a retreat every year, and they you know basically plan their year and talk about different aspects of, of their group, but um, the membership structure in particular was, uh, sounded like it was going to be a pretty needy um, piece of their agenda for the retreat and really looking at how do they talk about membership, what does membership include, how do you, um, how do you make, create different levels um, yes, that might be a little bit more um, enticing than what exists currently. Um, we've been, the friends have been getting lots of new members in the past several months with some increased messaging, particularly at the sales. Um, so I think they're, they're experiencing um, some success with just increased outreach and, and messaging. So um, I will check with them, but hopefully hopefully that's still part of their retreat uh, plans is to kind of revamp the membership structure. Um, and like even the flyer that I got sent for the pop-up, they're getting more comfortable with being very overt about, hey, the library needs money and this is the only way that they're getting it right now, so come out and support. Um, no decision about the nature of um, the liaison from this board attending their meetings in the, in the future. That's still something that needs to get nailed down. I mean, I the most that was said is they they like having the connection in that way, but you know, I, I think if however that works, they'll work with. 
you know, when you're the liaison from the still. So right. I think, you know, it, if it's like, well, I could not come every meeting and do that, but they don't want to lose the connection. And or did you, did you float the idea of them coming here on occasion as well? I don't think that came up. Did, I don't do you think remember? there was any decisions necessarily. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they were kind of still coming a little bit over. Okay. 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 Well, then my plan is the next meeting that I can attend, whether it's the retreat or a regular meeting. Um, I will bring a specific proposal for them to discuss, but uh, yeah. Because if you want me to start going to some of them, we can talk about yeah. that. Um, I want to hear from them what what would Empire Retreat satisfy that the best place to meet somebody. Whatever, they're all friendly. Well, yes, friendly. but. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you know in regard to the connection with this board I think the seasonal attendance would be sufficient yeah and you could even add a one time a year joint like have them come yeah and, and talk to us not like a fancy presentation so great. tell us about your gear and what's working I like that idea where you need support. That's true. Maybe maybe after their retreat would be a good time for them to kind of kick off the once a year. Why don't you guys come to talk to us after the retreat when mm -hmm. it's fresh and they have goals and yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's all I have from the friends. City council, Susie. Okay. So. There are a lot of events <laughs> in the summertime. That's one of the things we Attendance after you know, Pride, and we have Juneteenth coming up this Saturday at Roosevelt Park from 1 to 6. And um, on Friday the 21st, uh, this Friday at 2.45, Children, Youth, and Families will be having their 40th anniversary, 40th year anniversary of Children's Youth and Family Department. Uh, and that'll be at the Youth Center on Lashley. And so, you know, if anyone's interested in that. Um, we recently had an open house for the fire station, the two, I think, on 17th Avenue. So uh, the northwest part of town. And there'll be another one uh, in July 20th uh, for the South Pratt Station, it's the one next to, um, you know, near 119 and South Pratt. Mm -hmm. from, I mean, I think it's in the same parking lot where if you're going into Safeway, right? Correct. Okay. Oh, so yes. A, so they'll, yeah, they just have a big remodel. <laughs> yeah, so they'll, you know, they'll have an open house and kind of activities for the kids and opportunity for people to tour the, the facility so if anyone's interested and another uh, we have the nepali jatra um and this time it'll be instead of at the museum it's going to be downtown main street oh. they've outgrown the using the the museum facility so they're and that will be from five to seven also on july 20th so, yeah, and so, and so you, the Juneteenth and the Pali Jatra are, are um, celebrations that were um, kind of sponsored by LMAC, the Lama Multicultural Action Committee. And, you know, and then we have just other, you know, the fire station was really, it's been in the works for a while. And I know it had been, the open house had been rescheduled several times. So just getting getting that stuff out there for anyone who's interested. Um, recently, we heard, and let me see if I have it in my notes. Um, we heard um, from Longmont uh, the open spaces. Um, so we got a presentation of the past, the present, and looking towards the future. So again, you know, it, it's. Um, there's a possibility that we might do a ballot measure. <laughs> My stomach just kind of, uh, 
But looking into the sustainability factor and the stewardship of, of maintaining these spaces that we've acquired. So part of open space is not just acquiring the land, but it's also that, that maintenance. Last Friday, we were on a tour of um, back behind sandstone. So looking at some of the open spaces out in that in that part of town and looking at some open spaces that's designated as agriculture um, where farmers have actually leased these spaces and kept you know grow their their crops in these fields so the that money that's utilized from that um, from the leasing then goes into sustaining open space other open space areas um, but in looking towards the future we do have a ballot, so a ballot measure that is expected to sunset, I think it passed in 2014, and that was for an open space. It's set to sunset in 2034. So as the department is looking towards the future, I mean, they're having to make plans now thinking, you know, 10, 20 years out. So, you know, as they're making their long-term plans, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty if we don't continue that that that, that tax, and I, I believe it's 0 0.02 percent. So um, sales tax. So it is very small, but also knowing what happened last year, <laughs> it was a very small amount. Um, so I think you know, as we're we're looking towards the future. You know, we really want to think about, and it's not adding another tax, but it's just extending seems or putting. To be easy. What's that? That usually seems to be easier to pass when it's renewing an already existing tax that people are used to. Yeah. So you know, I, I hope so. But it was, once we started discussing the idea of ballot measure, I was like, oh yeah. god. <laughs> uh, was, the other one's so fresh in, in the mind. Uh, so that's, we're, we're going to be bringing that up for discussion again in the future as well. And, you know, we heard from the Senior Citizens Advisory Board and, you know, looking at, you know, as we have this aging population of folks and what the priorities are. And, you know, it comes down to housing, um, support services, especially for people who are not in a position where they really need to go to full-time um, care, assisted living care, but they're kind of in between, where they they still have um, needs and needing supports, um, but can still live at home. So, what are those the, that for that middle group of people of offering the supports and resources, and the not requiring the full full-blown assisted living? Plus, you know, looking at the, at the cost of that too, and health. So we were looking at that, um, you know, taking in that perspective. So yeah, we we had a lot of reports, <laughs> updates in that regard. From the Longmont Economic Development Partnership, is the Longmont report. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm looking at my my notes. We do have some. Um, we did hear back from staff on the customer satisfaction survey I think in the past they've utilized a um, you know a company that that went out and, and did did the survey collected the data and this time their staff is looking at using a software system that will allow the city to 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 make adjustments to the questioning and pull out you know, extrapolate the data that they uh, they want to focus on, you know, whether it's looking at programming or particular policy. So I, it sounded like it would give them more flexibility in um, in how they can pull out the data and and use that for moving forward. So, yeah, and that's pretty much all I have. Yeah, next week we're meeting with the, uh, the Longmont Housing Authority, or tomorrow, and then the following week we're, we have regular, regular session. 
Thank you, Susie. Was the um, that 0.02% open space tax, is that related at all? A few months ago, uh, one of our county commissioners came to council, gave a presentation on open space, and, and I think um, it was on last year's that ballot. But it had to do with the county, but um, the yeah. commissioner Lochman made a, a presentation to council. Yeah, so those are two different. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the open space, that was one of the county, we, we passed for, for county land. Right. And this would be specific to a long area. Okay. And that, so that tax taxes is for a long time. Yep. All the way long. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions or comments related to these reports? Um, any professional news or items from from the news, from media, things to bring about library land? Conference coming up, right? Yeah. What is that? Oh, at the, yeah, ALA, the American Library oh. Association conference is coming up at the end of the month. We, we won't have staff there. Yeah. Uh, I've been asked, but yeah. That's one of our, one of our many budget requests is professional development, but boy, would it be nice to go to that one this year, mm -hmm. you know where it is. San Diego. Yeah, it's in San Diego. Just trying to get up the library sending staff to the PLA? Well, that would happen. That was oh, in April, happened. and that was thanks to the friends. Right, right. That's the only reason that happened. Right. Um, yeah, too bad that one gets in. Nothing against Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> and, and given the choice. And you know, in, in, at the end, it doesn't matter if you're in a convention center in one yeah. city or another. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't really matter. Um, Colorado Association of Libraries, which I also won't unfortunately be able to send staff to this year because it's now That's in high country, right? This year it's in Breckenridge, yeah. which sounds glorious. Uh, but in years past, the, for many years it was in Loveland. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, traditionally that conference used to move every year and then they kind of I don't know, they, they must have had a good contract with the Embassy Suites in Loveland, so who's there for many years. Very nice for us because yeah. I could send staff there because it's so close that there's, you know, it, it's registration and maybe some mileage, you right. know, as opposed to this, which is lodging and meal, that it's a whole different thing. Yeah. So uh, it's nice to go to those state shows. It really is just even just for the networking aspect. But I just can't do it this year because of finances. Because it's out of town. It requires travel. Oh yeah, but it's not and unless yes, you're an availability issue. It's more of a budget issue. Correct. Okay. It's only a budget issue. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Well, I think <coughs> now would be a good time for us to go and see <coughs> the, um, the, children's, the children's area unless, um, because the comment section, so the comments are all going to be about, from my perspective, thanking and, and, and keeping praise on Cynthia for doing such an amazing job as chair of this board. And and we would hopefully eat some cookies, those of us who are able to do so. Um, so I don't know. Does it work to go tour and then cookies, or I, I think it? we should, should go ahead comments? and do the the comments, mm -hmm. uh, and then officially adjourn, knowing that we're doing the tour after that. Oh, way okay. We can shut the cameras down and. Very I'm good. sure long that public media wouldn't mind. <laughs> Not that this is for you, but. You may also have yeah. some cookies. You, you're welcome to have a cookie and go on a <laughs> tour. Yeah. So thank you very much for opening the uh, Zoom. Oh, of course. Any, uh, always. Yeah, I know you have to run, so thank you, Susie. Glad we got through this for you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Susie. Thank you for all you well, thanks, Susie. I'm sure I'll see you around at all the fun events this yeah. summer. Mm -hmm. All right, bye.
there any other comments? Yeah, just thank you, Cynthia. I mean, I, I know I have snacks for you. Thank you, Jane, for providing that and for some of your gift card comments there. But um, yeah, it's just been a pleasure working with you. I, I know I, you won't be a stranger, but at least in this capacity, um, you're always welcome to come and give a public comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right. not sure you know. Actually, all of those you names. know what to yeah. say. <laughs> Thank you all. It's been a real pleasure. <laughs> We will adjourn at 7.59 p.m.